Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, uh, my name is Mustafa Fayek, and I'm a geologist. Uh, so I, I tend to work with, with archaeologists such as Sharon Hall over here and, and Vance Haynes. Um, now, most of you have heard a lot about this uh, over the past couple of days. And I'd like to start my talk with a quote that was, that was, uh, that was, uh, that was given this morning. And that is a quote by Carl Sagan. And Carl Sagan, for those of you who don't know who he is, uh, is the late Carl Sagan. He, he died in 1996. He's an astronomer. And, um, and what he said is that um, extraordinary, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Okay? Now, this is true for any theory we put forward, or any concept we put forward. Not just the ET concept, but any kind of theory that we put forward. Okay? Um, so, and, and a, a way of a hypothesis or a concept to become theory requires time. It has to be tested over time. Uh, and by different, different uh, researchers, by different methods, and so on. So, even though some, some people consider this a theory, I consider still this a hypothesis um, that has to be tested over and over again. Um, so, and you heard this morning also, some of these skeptics, not the cynics, but the skeptics, uh, um, some, of their, some of the reasons why uh, they, they're, they're skeptic of this, uh, of this concept of the extraterrestrial uh, impact concept is, is that because we don't see a crater, uh, there are no tectites, uh, there are no shock minerals or high temperature minerals, okay? There's no evidence of those. And the evidence that they did show, that Alan and Ted showed uh, yesterday, all the check marks that they had, and all the access they did, they, 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 were, the, were the evidence they didn't have, um, basically could, on their own, have formed by different methods. It could have been cosmic dust, it could have been all sorts of things. Um, the reason why tectites, and I'll explain what tectites are in a second, uh, and impact material or high temperature minerals are important, because they are the true fingerprints for an impact. Okay? You cannot form those in a terrestrial environment. You cannot form those in a sediment. You cannot form those in any other way except for something in the ground at very high velocities. And so what we want to do today is put two check marks okay, in those X's. We're not going to present evidence of a crater. Can't. Right? But we can show you evidence of tectites and impact materials and high temperature minerals. Okay, so um, these samples were given to us by Vance Haynes. And these samples were collected from the Murray Springs site, the very famous Murray Springs site. You heard all about this this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this afternoon, this morning and, and, and yesterday. And what we did is we looked at a couple of size fractions. Now the samples that he gave us were the magnetic separates from the sediments, okay, from the Murray Springs site. And we looked at two size fractions. We looked at a very large size fraction Ones are about uh, half, a, half, a center, half a millimeter size. And then the very small size fraction is about 100 mic 180 microns in size. These were sieved. Um, this is an example of a particle that we found from the really large size fractions. And this particle actually has a very unusual texture. It consists of a number of microspherules in a matrix. Okay? So this time we're not looking at individual spheres that could have been cosmic dust. These are spheres within a matrix. And upon closer examination of these spheres, right here's a sphere, okay? And I understand that some of you in the back there can't see these, and I'd welcome you after the talk, you can come and have a look at them at, uh, uh, at, at close range. Some of these, micros these, some of these spheres, these microspherules, are made up of actually smaller microspherules. So they're, they're actually clusters. They're not these smooth, rounded things. They're actually these small little clusters of microspherules. And this texture is very similar to some of this microspherules you find in carbonaceous chondrites. Okay, these have been reported by, by a group from uh, Arizona State University, as a matter of fact. Now, now when we looked at these, the, these smaller size fractions, next one, please. We did find that these spheres can also occur on their own. So here's, a, here's an individual sphere that was sieved at the 180 micron size fraction. This is a, a scanning electron image of this uh, sphere. And upon closer examination of the sphere with the little microspherules here, these, these sort of bundles, Vance Haynes calls these bundles. Um, in these bundles, we see the, the minerals 
here, the morphology of the minerals that make up these spheres. And the morphology of these minerals is consistent with magnetite. That's why it's magnetic. That's why these are magnetic, uh, uh, these are part of the magnetic uh, separates. And so what we have here, magnetites tend to be high temperature minerals. Right? Okay, so they, they tend to be fairly high temperature minerals. Now these have been, of course, uh, uh, altered because they are coming from a sediment that's 13,000 years old. So, um, but the morphology is still consistent with magnetites. Okay. Now, we weren't just satisfied with this. We wanted to do a lot more. And this is a, 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 a plot, three plots here, right? And we plotted silicon versus iron. This is the composition from the spheres that we, we, we found. And we compared them to known extraterrestrial material. This is known material found at impact sites where uh, meteorite showers have, have, have come down, uh, such as the places in, in, in Romania and so forth, uh, carbonaceous chondrites over here, and also tectites. Now, what are tectites? Why, why are tectites so important? Tectites are basically fused pieces of the Earth that are fused during an impact. Okay? So they're very good indicators of an impact. Now, what are, what are impact material then? Uh, as described in the literature, and this is data from the literature here, okay, uh, impact material is essentially m more, more or less pieces of the meteorite itself that has fused with a little bit of the Earth. Okay? So it's mostly the meteorite with a little bit, the composition has changed just a bit from what it, 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 it used to be. So these are basically spherules in chondrites here, right? And this is impact material, so basically it's gaining an uh, increase in silica, which is the silica that's coming from the Earth, because iron-rich meteorites tend to be just iron. There's nothing else in there. Right? So the, the, the interpretation is the increase in silica is essentially uh, some, somewhat of a fusion. And, and the chemistry of these minerals is very unusual. It's not common. You don't find the chemistry of these minerals in, in, in common terrestrial minerals. Okay, you just don't find them. They're very weird. Okay, okay. so, so here's, here's our plot. This is our data here. Okay, again, silica versus iron. And we plotted the actual uh, spherules themselves in the, in the open symbols here, and our matrix, right? And we found one particle that actually looked like a tectite. Again, tectite here, known tectite, our, our grain, and this is the other grain, two grains, right? And they follow exactly the same trend as the extra stress material. Right? Now, okay, this is great. But let's test this. Let's compare this to known spherules found on Earth. Right? Here are fulgurites. What fulgurites are when lightning strikes the Earth, right, it fuses the Earth, and it causes things to, to, to fuse to look like glasses and so on, and, and also makes spherules in them. And these, these are the fulgurites here. These are spherules found from Vance Haynes', Vance Haynes roof, where I went to these. So again, they're not the same. They're more similar in composition to the known extraterrestrial material. So what is this telling us about our samples? Right? We think we see evidence, both chemically and also uh, petrographically and textures, that are more or less consistent with tectites and impact material. Okay? This is significant because it's from the Murray Spring site, and it's telling us that these can only form from an impact, some kind of impact. Now, could it be an explosion in the air and some material hit in the ground, like, like in Tunguska, perhaps? Is it a, a one giant impact crater? I don't know, I don't think so. But um, we can discuss what kind of impact we have. And that's not really my area of expertise. This is more my area of expertise. So, in conclusion, we think we have evidence of, of tectites and impact material, microtectites and impact material. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next speaker is, uh, a, it's a paper presented by R.A. Barney. It's evidence of feature use from Firecrack Rock. Linda Scott Cummings will be.